Welcome. This is Barry Jones from the Angel School, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for February the 15th through the 21st, 2021. So before we begin, I'd just like to um, welcome anyone who's viewing my channel for the very first time, and um, as well as any of the new subscribers who've been joining us throughout the past weeks. So just to um, give you a few updates um, about what's going on in the channel, the my monthly angel scopes, which are the angel readings that I do for the 12 different uh, zodiac signs, they have already been posted for this month. So if you not aware of this, um, you can check them out on my channel. Um, there's one for each sign, and I know some people follow like their rising, um, their ascendant and their moon sign as well, so they're all there, so you can follow that. Um, you can dis discover this, um, if you can't find it on YouTube, you can find it on my Facebook page below, um, as well as my Twitter account. So just look below the video, and the description area and you'll find those links. Um, also, I had posted the annual um, reading for the years of the 12 months that's posted on my channel, if you haven't checked that out as well. And the daily card messages that I write um, weekly, Monday through Friday, they are up um, and you can find them on any of those social media platforms as well. And I think last but not least, um, just to make you aware of my um, angel reading special offer um, that I've been putting out there since the pandemic, um, my half hour reading for $77 has been extended for one full hour. And so um, you can go to my webpage, theangelschool.com slash services. There's a link below. And you would just select the half hour reading as it is noted there. And within 24 hours on the first business day of the week, I will send you a confirmation email noting the special offer. It will also come with the instructions about how to set the appointment and to submit your availability um, as instructed. So I'll give you a starting date for when I'm uh, ready. And I ask everyone for three weeks of availability that way as i'm doing it in the order that that the payments come in um i don't have to uh, wait or lose your place in line so um just be aware of that and there are no limitations or restrictions about this so if you've had the reading before you can um, choose to have another reading with the special offer again all right so Let's begin, and let's just really take this opportunity and this moment to take a deep breath and to really let go of everything that's on your mind, especially if there's anything, that just wrote the word loud. So if there's anything that's um, really been just keeping you up at night or it's something that just keeps um, sort of making the most noise let that go and they wrote the word first of all you're safe so whatever it is that's really um, sort of alarming you or sound an alarm for you they want you to know you're safe and they, they wrote the word fight like as if you're fighting something okay and I'm seeing the word pendulum so um, this could go Either way, it's nothing settled right now. Um, even no matter how things look, um, they want you to know that the outcome could swing either way. So I don't know what this is about, um, but don't, don't give up and don't make up your mind. That is to say, don't make up your mind about the, you know, other people. Don't make up your mind about yourself or whatever pattern you're noticing 
um, or you think you're seeing, it's not finished yet. So, <laughs> you know, don't, don't draw any conclusions. Keep a very open mind, okay? And I'm seeing the Archangel Jeremiah. And the first thing I saw, I don't know why my glasses just feel like I keep finding little spots, um, was test. Now, Archangel Jeremiah is the Archangel um, who, I think his name means the mercy of God. And so he helps with life review when, you, when we cross over. Of course, he's going to be coming up a lot because now we're having life reviews um, while we're in a human body. That means that we're getting a chance to see everything from different perspectives. So this awareness, and Archangel Michael is coming through as well, so there's an awareness um, that we've never had before where we really can um, see things from different angles and kind of see things coming. And so you're not really the innocent victim anymore <laughs> um, that maybe you felt like you were in the past. So you have the opportunity to, you have this you know strong intuition or sense that something you know, that you need to make amends or that you need to let go or that you need to, or that there's a better solution, that's a better way for you to do this. And so don't hold back from doing that. And so in a way, um, there are these little tests because what's unfolding is that, you know, it's always free will. But on this ascension path, it is giving you the opportunity to make better decisions and make better choices. And, you know, the ego, like I tell people, um, sort of the ego, you know, we're in a higher dimension. We're no longer really operating in the three dimensional construct. So it's like when somebody cuts your a limb off and you have these phantom pains, all right? So right now, what we're experiencing are phantom pains. And um, so the thing is, is that, but it's still our choice to um, behave as though we're three-dimensional or not, right? So in the sense of the, what that consciousness means. Now, we're still in a three-dimensional physical reality, but what we're talking about is three-dimensional mindset. And that mindset was disconnected at the cosmic moment on December 21st, 2020, okay? And so now what you're experiencing is sort of these phantom pains. And the, the test is to you can self-correct now because the, there are more options. So like, you know, we're going from three dimension to fifth dimension. The fourth dimensional mindset is all of a sudden where you're having the aha moments, light bulb moments. When for the first time, it's that, it's that mindset of enlightenment where you start to see options and choices. And some of you may be there and some of you may be already in that fifth dimensional mindset where you automatically begin to see the, 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 the reasons for duality and that it gives you the opportunity to see what you are able to create through having this du dual consciousness, the ability to choose. But you can also see how the choices can, it's almost like alchemy, um, as helping to create. So you, so I'm, I've never believed that a peace, a time of peace means that there will be no issues. What I believe it is in, in the fifth dimensional construct and my mindset is 
I see the bigger picture. I understand the reason. So there is um, a song that came on my um, YouTube feed this week um, by Mahalia Jackson. And the song said, Lord, don't move my mountain. And I thought to myself, that's got to be a mistake. <laughs> you know, because I've always heard people said, you know, we always prayed to, to move my obstacles, move my mountains, right? But when I listened to the, the song, she went on to sing, Lord, don't move my mountains, but give me the strength to climb. And in that moment, I understood, especially because of the way she sang and the, the expression in her eyes and her heart was so open and full of emotion. The, she was in that state. She was definitely in that fifth dimensional state because she understood that there are mountains that we have to climb. And there are some mountains we don't have to. There are some mountains that are unnecessary. They, it's just drama that we don't need. But there are mountains that strengthen us so that when we reach the top, we can see, uh, we're at, we're available to see a whole higher level of opportunities by climbing that mountain and by asking for the strength to climb it and not to get around it. So it's sort of that situation where I feel that's a fifth dimensional under construct mindset where we don't let things alarm us, but we see the bigger picture. We see what, how this is going to create and add such spiritual value. And it's not just for you, but when there are mountains that we are meant to climb, whether we decided before we came here that that challenge was one that we wanted to um, go through, when you do that, those challenges that we're meant to climb, those mountains that we're meant to climb, are uh, contributions to our entire world. Because when you climb a mountain and you reach that mountain peak, everyone in the network of oneness receives the celebration of your accomplishment, your spiritual accomplishment, your spiritual enlightenment. Is The signal is radiated from your heart like the brightest sun. And everyone is illumined by this strength and courage that you, and enlightenment that you've gathered. So it feeds across the collective and creates a shift, an important shift. So every mountain that you or I have climbed has been for the highest good of all. And in the fifth dimension, you don't fight. You don't fight against these opportunities because that's what they are. You know what they're meant for. And that's that's a little that's a very big difference because in the th three dimensional mindset, it's all about me 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 ego. And that's all the ego is is just this bl you know blown out of proportion, isolated, self serving, you know self preservation, only thinking about its own survival and not service. The ego is the opposite of service. And all spiritual beings, which is, which is all the network of oneness, which is all source, is about service. And is about uplifting the collective, which all of us are connected to. And our truth, our truth, is our divine mission, our role, our job to play out for the collective, 
for this in service to the collective, that all be uplifted and enlightened, and that all have peace, joy, and unconditional love in abundance. And we've been talking about this. There's no way, and we can see this now. We these problems of the world <laughs> that we are fighting. You know, we're 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 infighting, we're fighting with ourselves. These troubles of the world cannot be solved without this shift of being in service, climbing your mountain in service for uplifting the collective. So all of us are going through different things and the problems that we've, that have risen to the surface over the last few years collectively that have been hitting us collectively is showing us where we need to step up as light workers to serve. And it is in every role of society. There is no place in society, there's no work, there is no duty or responsibility or obligation that is not an opportunity for this service. Even if you're even a parent or a neighbor to a child or a school to a child or government to a child, and etc. Everyone, it is all, whatever capacity that you are being in that moment, whatever hat you are wearing, it is always one of service for uplifting the collective. And whatever it is that you're going through, sickness, pain or suffering, whatever mountain you are climbing, when you step into that fifth dimensional mind or even that fourth dimensional, when you have your first aha, you create a shift in that area, that problem of life for all. You when your light, when your heart opens up and no longer fights it, but embraces the challenge with unconditional love, first towards yourself and towards the situation, and you gain the elevation through the information, through the enlightenment, that ray, new ray of optimism is spread throughout the consciousness of that problem so that when everyone else encounters that problem, your illumination now is encoded and they will receive that new development, that new awareness, that new mountain peak or that new summit of awareness and possibilities. We are not in this world just for ourselves. And we have the incredible opportunity right now to begin in putting this divine plan into action. This is the, at the very least, the outline of your soul contract, your reason for being here in this lifetime now. This is what you are searching for. This is the purpose that you feel is yearning within you. 
And all you have to do now is not walk around that mountain, but ask for the strength to climb. I encourage you to look up this song sung by Mahalia Jackson and listen to and watch her, her eyes, her spirit. And this is 1955, but that woman was most definitely in touch. I, I have to believe that as a gospel, early, early gospel singer, she's a gospel singer, just in case you don't know, but I'm sure many people do. She was really a satellite sent ahead of the movement of this time to prepare us by, you know, really touching us, our spirit. And she did that worldwide. Unlike, you know, you'll see different artists and different things, but they don't really reach everybody, especially sometimes when there is a, it's sort of kind of um, like, you know, Christianity or gospel music may not be a worldwide thing that everybody listens to. But, you know, but, but boy, she at that time, you know, she was traveling like an opera singer, you know, everywhere. So I hope you get a chance to hear that. And, and let it, the, 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 you, when you will understand it in your heart and, and you will feel what I'm saying, and that is like what it's like to be in that fifth dimensional. We're not trying to fight. We're not trying to say, no, uh, you know, that, that we're not here in a human experience because there's a reason why we chose the human experience. We chose to come in to a, a three-dimensional um, physical world, go through a veil of am amnesia, forget in, having the, you know, not being able to remember all of our spiritual gifts so that we could play these roles. But we wanted to bring, we wanted to bridge these two worlds together in balance with one another within the construct of the spiritual laws of the universe and the physical laws of the universe. And so Archangel Raphael is coming through and he's, you know, he's writing the word exhaustion. So this is to let people, you know, identify that he's identifying that people are feeling exhausted, you know, on this spiritual path. But he's encouraging us not to give up, not to lose hope by the things that we see. And there may be some things that are going on right now. And he did write that we're in a stage of development, okay? And when you're in a process of development, just think about when you were trying to learn something for the first time, like a language, or, um, you know, you were training um, athletically to improve your skills, and and you weren't good enough yet, but you had to get there, you know? And so you could, and it was, it was really difficult, you know, like going to the gym and working out for the first time. Like I just went back this week after really two years. I've only been like a couple of times in between because of the pandemic and then other things when I broke my ankle. But, you know, it's really hard this week. My body was like just really feeling tired and sore and achy. But at the same time, I know that this is the beginning of things like my emotional well-being is going to improve. I can feel it slightly, but it's, I'm not there. This is the toughest part, right? So this is the developmental part. And we just had, you know, a huge election and shifts in government and people are feeling all kinds of things and they're hopeful, but at the same time, there's, there we're still, um, there's still things that make us gasp, right? Like it's incredible, like, you know, I can't believe and there, it may seem very disappointing, but they want you to know that you not to give up because we're not there yet, but we are moving towards wherever it is that all of us is going. And this has nothing to do with um, our political affiliations. This division 
is a mountain that we must climb, all of us. And each one of us is climbing a different facet of that mountain of this particular challenge to us. And wherever, whatever facet it is that you hold, that you're upholding within this challenge, you must not give up. And you must, as hard as it will be, your phantom ego will try to draw you back and make it personal and draw you out of the service will try to usurp your hope and cause you to shut down your heart. And I'm telling you that you might be standing next to somebody who is has opposing views, but you're meant, if your facet is next to that one, that's your mountain to climb, as well as the other person's mountain to climb. Because when we climb that mountain and we hold up our facets, it's going to come together. A realization is going to come together because the mountain's peak will grow smaller and fuse, the facets become fused together. They will meld together as they reach and culminate in that peak. So keep climbing your mountain and keep your heart open for what it is that you will create the illumination you will create for the collective, for the highest good of all of us. All right, so let's take a look at the Archangel that we're working with this week. And it's the Archangel Ariel, and it's the card of prosperity. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful message to receive in this beautiful golden energy. And I'm just thinking about when I, um, I don't know if any of you have uh, Dinah Cooper's Dragon Oracle cards, but right before I started, they, um, the white gold dragon from Lyra came up. And I'm just going to see if I can find this right quick so you can just see the picture. And um, here we go. And the energy of the dragon will be in the white dragon from Lyra. And this ninth dimensional pool of energy that it has, when you can go, you can go with the dragon, it says connects you to the highest Christ light. And this is not religion. This is not, you know, um, Jesus Christ. This is consciousness, the Christ consciousness. The Christ light is a ray and consciousness, not a being or person, okay? Because I've seen in comments on um, Dinah Cooper's um, videos, you know, some people were like, what, why is this, everything have to be Christian? It's not about that at all, actually. It's a consciousness. These things that um, we're talking about in, in metaphysics is about uh, bandwidth uh, or or frequencies of consciousness, and the, they have a particular influence. And it, believe it or not, you, because we're multidimensional anyway, as a soul, you are always fluctuating between any of these. That's why they're never going to go away. That's why I don't believe that the golden future ahead is absent of, of any state of consciousness. It's just that, that we will tend to be um, um, focused in one pre predominantly over the others, like before we've been predominantly focused on in the three-dimensional um, mindset, which, you know, you see a lot of greed, narcissism, just as the ultimate way to d describe it, you know, um, and, you know, survival, not thriving. In the fifth dimension, you'll see yourself thriving. But in the, in the third dimension, you're focused on surviving. Okay? And everybody is divided. The people are divided naturally in a three-dimensional frame uh, mindset because 
that's why there's this great fear and the need to protect. We need, that's why there's, you know, this whole thing with guns is so big because people have, don't feel safe. They don't trust the other divine being presence because their personality is not coming across as the divinity of their I am presence. They're not being their highest self. And I was watching a video by um, Tim Wilde, which is also someone who co-authors with Dinah Cooper. And um, he talked about, you know, just, just saying, you know, calling in, I am my highest self, not just I am my higher self, but I am my highest self. And I did that and I just all of a sudden felt my energy just boost. And he was talking about it just goes right into the, that energy comes right into your base chakra, okay? And the base chakra deals with, um, you know, so, you know, your, your physical needs, food and resources. So your basic needs, that basic instinct of survival. But when you bring, when you say, I am my highest self, you're bringing that energy into that base chakra. So when the base chakra in the fifth dimension goes from red in the third dimension and becomes a platinum, which might be similar to this white goal, right? So you can call upon the white gold dragons from Lyra to help to connect you with that higher love, that higher consciousness, Christ light. And it says, develop your causal chakra, bathe in ninth dimensional Christ light. <clears throat> so I don't have time now, but you know, when you have a chance afterwards, just ask this dragon to take you on a journey, to take you to that pool in Lyra, this and where you can bathe in that ninth dimensional frequency and also to help open in an automatic when you call them open up your causal chakra which is one of the chakras that had been shut down um after the time of atlantis so the we you know these are the, this is the chakra just above the crown chakra and then there's the, the soul star and the stellar gateway so um but this Archangel Ariel is, and that's why I thought about this because all this gold light, and it reminded me because they just um, said it, but showed me the white dragon um, from Lyra. And then there's a beautiful golden energy, this idea of prosperity. And this just gives us a sense that they're telling me right now, you know, what they're talking about, the very first thing, don't give up, right? So... Things may not look like they're going to be go the way that you'd like them. But no matter what happens, the outcome, things will go the way that you deserve. Okay? You, that means that there is, a, you know, when one thing happens, as they, oh, the old folks just say, when one door closes, another one opens. And that's what Archangel Ariel is trying to tell you that don't be afraid to climb this mountain. You're not climbing the mountain just for the results you thought you were going to get. You're climbing the mountain to get something far greater than you could have imagined. And so the universe is pouring out this cornucopia of healing, right? With this golden nuggets of prosperity for you. And so it says, your material needs are provided as you follow your intuition and manifest your dreams into reality. So don't give up on your dreams manifesting. They just may not happen the way you think you thought they were going to, but that doesn't mean that you will not manifest something that you deserve. All right, let's take a look at the card for the beginning of the week. So this is the warrior of air or the knight of um, swords. And I know it's a very interesting figure. These paintings that, you know, are so expressive, right? So it's really when you look at these, this um, shimmering veil, I always say that these are, are shimmering ones beyond the veil. And so 
it would appear that he has like these swords, but it, it seems like he's in motion. So we're seeing like a slow motion and then the sort of, um, you know what I'm trying to say, like the, the um, remnants of the movement. So it's not that he has multiple hands, but what he's doing, as you can see, look at all this, this energy moving around him. And he, like all uh, the swords, they like to clear the air and get to the truth, get to the heart of the matter. <clears throat> and so you might feel that you're going to be might begin this week that you're dealing with a lot of energy that, you know, is just like drama, right? And so you're going to have to really, you know, cut through that. And the only way you're going to be able to cut through that is to focus on what's important and, f and, and, and really advocate whatever your truth is. You know, be very, very focused and crystal clear, be very um, direct, be decisive, and as they're writing out, be, be full of faith and conviction, okay? about whatever it is. So don't let anybody persuade you or sway you off of your path. This, you know what's right. They want you to trust in your, your instincts. You know what's right and you know what needs, you know what you need. So don't be afraid to ask for it. And this might be a challenge across that you, some of, across the bear for some of you you don't like it. You don't maybe like to confront, but you're going to have to do it. You've got to stick up for what you know is right and what is your truth and what you've set out to do in this moment because you know it was inspired by your heart. And if this, if, you know, all this other stuff that's going on, whatever people presenting is just, you know, BS, right? So, all right. And here we have the Emperor. Isn't this just gorgeous? This card. Oh my God. I love this card. I've been waiting for this card to come up. Isn't that just selfish? Like, I just want the card to come up, you know, despite it may not be necessary for the reading, but I wanted it to come up in any of the readings I do. And this is just perfect because here we now have the Emperor representing authority. And, but look at this Emperor. I mean, it's just amazing out of all the Emperors. This has got to be my. No, this is my favorite emperor card because he seems so ethereal, right? So spiritual, enlightened, and it's got this orange and um, orange, goldish, reddish colors. It sort of reminds me of Archangel Metatron. So about focus, okay, and authority here. And I've, I get this feeling that this is something, this is um, an important part of your life purpose. And also to exercise your authority, your, you know, that you're in, that you've been, how do you want to say, uh, the word I'm, I'm looking for is that you've been given, imbued or endowed with the authority to um, do what it is that you've come to do. So you have the angels and you have the Ascended Masters. And this is a really, you know, because these Ascension colors um, that Archangel Metatron holds, um, it, it tells me that this is a part of your Ascension path. And so that you really should, um, you know, not feel that what you're doing is not right or let somebody make you feel that you're not doing the right things. I get the sense that maybe um, you might have uh, doubts arising because of all the stuff that's going around and you feeling like, you know, you it's just too much work or you're just too much um, stuff going on. And maybe it's something, maybe you're off because it, it can't be, you know, just you that's right if everybody else is not in alignment with this, it's just, maybe it's you. No, but you are the one who is bringing this higher frequency. And what you're doing is you're upsetting in a way, you're triggering people around you because your vibration is higher. And 
it's triggering them to, to it's activating their vibration and they're resisting it. And that's very different. So you've been given the authority to, because you're entrusted because your heart is golden. To, and so you must do what you've come to do and, and trust that it's the right thing to do. Okay? And Archangel Raphael is coming up again and he's standing behind you with this and he's saying that you have this healing effect and he wants you to know that your purpose is one of healing. And even though it might be a little jarring for some, it will, the, the, once it, the wave kind of blows over, it will, you know, sort of fizzle out and, and people will be glad for what you did. All right. And now we have, wow, the, this would be the, um, in her deck of the, the Dewas, or Devas, this is the cosmos. Um, but here she's, it's the uh, wheel of fortune. So when this card comes up as the cosmos, it's about creating something. So you have this opportunity to shift um, to, it's almost like, because the angel of destiny came through when I was meditating. And when he shows up, and he showed up in my life twice, um, it was to change the course of something that was going to be terminal for me. And it was, you know, I, I sat and watched it, Kuan Yin and Jesus, one Easter, and the angel of destiny came in, and I was praying for, for healing, and it changed the course the, the course of my my health. So um, that means that he's coming in and we have an opportunity to change the course of something very important in your life. So this wheel of fortune is really the wheel of change and the wheel of destiny. Um, because the angel of destiny came in in my meditation, this means that this is really important and you've been given the authority and you are the, been um, asked to stand in that power, stand in that conviction and lead. So don't let anybody, again, turn you around. This would be a song. Don't, don't let anybody turn you around, a gospel song. Don't let anybody turn you around in this week. Don't give in to that phantom messages from your ego. Don't let anything or anyone or any aspect of you, old drama, turn you around because the universe is changing your destiny. And so if you feel called to, to, to lead and to get behind some cause, if you feel, you know, that you're called to climb your mountain, to climb a mountain, don't ask for it to be moved, but pray for the strength to climb. Pray for the strength to climb. All right. And uh, this is the 10. I don't know if you can see it. It's like the little circle there. So those, that's the symbol for pentacles. So it's the 10 of pentacles. And the author was saying that this is a card. This is like, you know, it shows the path um, of the history of you know, that we've taken as humans for eons from the beginning to now. And so it's that legacy of, of, of worlds, like these planets. And um, I don't know what this is here, but like it looks like people or, and different things and, and galaxies and the parts of the universe. So this is really interesting to come right after that card because this is a card of legacy. This is a card of wealth and well-being. This is a card of family, right? And um, and so this is some. This is basically telling us that we have. There's something important in this week. Whether it doesn't matter how it turns out, but it's going to shift our legacy. It's going to put us on a whole new path. And so 
in the third dimensional mind, you might be upset. Well, let's just put it this way. No matter which side, somebody's going to be upset. But in the fifth dimensional mind, it's going to activate people to climb their mountain, to create that invaluable service for the collective. So let's just be aware that either it's setting, this week is setting us up for a, an enormous and incredible shift in some way, big or small. Don't worry about the facet that you're playing, but every facet is adding to the legacy and is shifting our legacy. So don't give up. And this is not something that's going to play out this week in the end, be in and we're, no, I didn't mean it to sound like that. But it's an important week. And so think about everything that you are doing in your life. Be more intentional. Don't let this week, if this reading means anything, don't let this week go by without you being intentional in some way. We just had a new moon. Um, and from what I'm told, a new moon in Aquarius is a new lunar year, um, you know, Friday. So, and we have like six planets, you know, in Aquarius. So, there's something really important here um, going on. And so let's not let this new moon energy where you would, you know, um, set intentions for new beginnings or things that you want to create. This, let it also, because the Aquarius energy is about the collective, you know, so let it be something, let yourself connect in with what is your facet of service for the collective, Okay. All right, so I send you lots of love. And look at all this beautiful, you know, colors that we have sort of similar neutrals and goals. And All right, but I send you lots of love and angel blessings. And have a beautiful week, everyone. Namaste.